Hello students. In this video we'll discuss how to model stock prices as a time series. A stock price is a function S which maps a probability space omega cross time into a positive real number. So here this omega is a probability space and this interval over here is our time. And as I've written it, time is going to be a continuous variable, but if S maps omega typically cross a discrete set of times into the positive reals. In this case, in the continuous case, this is referred to as a stochastic process. In this case, it's referred to as a time series. Different terminology for the same thing. A time series, you will have discrete increments, and for a stochastic process, you'll have continuous increments. So let's consider an example of this. Let's consider the events in my probability space. I will have a bull event, which I'll write as omega 1. I will have an average event, which I'll write as omega 2. And I'll have a bear event, which I'll write as omega 3. So in this instance, I'm going to have three market scenarios. I'll have a bull market, I'll have an average market, or I'll have a bear market. And in each of these cases, I'm going to say that my stock price at time 0, we'll say that it's equal to 10, 10, 10. And in a bull market, let's consider two future times, a time one and a time two. We'll say that in a bull market, it goes up to 15, and then it goes up to 20. In an average market, we'll say it stays, maybe it goes up to 11, but then goes back down to 10. And in a bear market, we'll say it goes down to eight, and then goes down to six. So a bull market is where the stock price increases a function of time, typically, with maybe some small decreases, dips. An average market, where there's basically very close to the initial price. And a bear market is where you have sort of a decrease globally. So now what we can do is we can plot sample paths of these things. So now I can plot the stock price versus time. And we'll have time 0, we'll have time 1, and we'll have time 2. And for each of these values omega, I will get a different trajectory. So for the bull trajectory, the bull sample path, I will start at 10. And then the bull will go up to 15 at time 1. And then it will go up to 20 at time 2. So this purple path over here is the path, the sample pass S of omega 1, my bull path, with respect to T. Then I can consider the average path, which might go up just a little bit to 11. So this path will go up to 11 at time 1, and then come back down to 10 at time 2. This is S of omega 2, the average market T. That's my next sample path. And finally, I will have my bear path. It will go down to 8 and then go down to 6. So my bear path will do this and then go down over here to 6 at time 2. And this is my S of omega 3t. So each of these values, S omega 1 of t, S omega 2 of t, S omega 3 of t, are curves in the S of t, t plane, and they are referred to as the sample paths of the stock price. Now what we can do is we can use probabilistic tools to analyze these stock prices. So let me compute, let's see an example of how we would do that. Let me compute the expected value of S2. How do we compute the expected value of S2? Well, I need to know the probabilities of omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3, given that the probability of omega 1, the probability that there is a bull market, we'll say that's a quarter, the probability that there is an average market is a half, and the probability that there is a bear market, we'll say is also a quarter. So it's equally likely that there is a bull or a bear market, and on a in half the time you'll have just an average market. So to compute the expected value, of S2, we 
choose the values of S2 in each of those situations. So in the bull situation, I have a value of 20 times the probability of omega 1, plus in the average market, I have 10 times the probability of omega 2, plus the bear, so I'll have a 6 times the probability of omega 3. So to compute the expected value, you find the values of the stocks on each of those events and you multiply them by the probability those events happen and then you add up all the results. So we see that this is 20 times a quarter, so this is 20 times a quarter, plus 10 times a half, plus 6 times a quarter. We can simplify this, so 20 times a quarter is 5. 10 times a half is also 5, and then I will have 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So I'll have 10 plus 3 over 2, so 10 of course is 20 over 2, so I'll have 23 over 2. So the expected value of your stock price at time 2 is 23 over 2, so basically $11.50, given that those are your possible terminal values and the given probabilities. Thank you very much.